Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today let's look at the special uses for the symbols above the number keys on your keyboard. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you can read more about the Patreon campaign, join us, and get exclusive content and course discounts. So each of the special symbols above the number keys on your keyboard has special powers depending upon how you use it on your Mac. I'm going to stick to the symbols on the US keyboard in this tutorial. Let's start with the 1 key which if you use Shift will give you an exclamation mark. Now this symbol is sometimes used in computer code to indicate not. For instance here's some JavaScript in Automator. and You can see here I've set the variable A to 3 and I'm testing to see if A is 4. So if I look at the results here and run this you're going to see it says no. But if I were to put an exclamation mark before this I have to enclose the entire thing in parentheses then it's going to look for not A is equal to 4. Reversing the entire condition here. And I run it and now it says yes. So lots of programming languages use an exclamation mark for not but unfortunately it doesn't work that way in either Spotlight or in Numbers. But you can use an exclamation mark in Spotlight for factorial. This is a common symbol for factorial. So for instance 3 exclamation mark gives you 6. That's 3 factorial. In other words 1 times 2 times 3. If I were to do 5 factorial I would get the results of 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 which is 120. So next we come to the at symbol which is Shift 2 on US keyboards. Now you're familiar with the at symbol. You use it in email addresses. Before the at symbol is the, the local address on the server, usually your name, and then after it is the server address. But you also see the at symbol used in social media, for instance in front of Twitter handles or in a lot of places where you simply want to type somebody's handle in the service. You start with an at symbol and then start typing their name. This spills over into Mac OS in Mac OS Monterey. In the Messages app if you're in a group chat you can use the at symbol to refer to somebody in a message by their name. And you're going to be able to do that in Notes as well when you have collaborative notes with many people. And next we have Shift 3 which gives you a symbol that's sometimes called number, sometimes called pound, and sometimes called hash or hashtag. And you use that in social media to indicate a hashtag. So it's very common on Twitter or Instagram or even YouTube to put a hashtag with a topic description after it. And you're going to be able to use that in macOS Monterey in Notes to apply tags to Notes. So you can use hashtags throughout your notes and then search for them or view all the notes that have a certain hashtag. Now next on US keyboards of course there is Shift 4 which is the dollar sign key. It's going to be different on other keyboards. But you can use this in places like Spotlight to indicate currency. So for instance if I put dollar sign 20 it's immediately going to know I'm talking about dollars and it's going to give me a conversion right there. Usually to Euros as the default. Now in Numbers you can use a dollar sign as well and it will instantly know that this number is supposed to be formatted as currency. So instead of just typing 20 I put dollar sign 20 and it knows to keep the dollar sign and put two decimal places after it. Now you'll also find this in coding to indicate variables. For instance if you were to add a shell script in Automator here and set the input as arguments you can see the default bit of code it gives you uses dollar sign here to define variables. Matter of fact you're also going to see the at symbol here to define the incoming parameters. Now Shift 5 gives you the percent symbol and this is used usually to represent percentages. As a matter of fact numbers will take this literally as percentages. So if I put 20 percent it will then convert that to a percentage. In other words that's really 0.2. If I select it and look at the actual value it's 0.2 which stands for 20%. And you can use this in Spotlight as well. So for instance if I want to calculate a 20% tip on something and it's say $75 I can multiply that by 20 and then add percent and it's going to calculate the percentage of that. So $75 times 20% is 15. Sometimes you also see percent in URLs or in other places where there's coding to represent certain characters. It's called URL encoding. For instance percent to zero is the hexadecimal number 32 representing a space. So next with Shift 6 we've got a little symbol that looks like an up arrow. It's actually called a caret. And it's typically used in math functions for an exponent. So for instance if you want to do 5 squared you can do 5 and then caret 
to the second power. And that gives you 25. I can do to the third power as well. This will work in numbers formulas too. So I'm going to hit equals here to do a formula. And let's say 5 and then the caret symbol for power 2. And you can see it raises 5 to the second power. Sometimes you actually see this typed out. So you actually can use like 5 and then caret 3 like that when you want to indicate 5 to the third power without having to mess around with formatting. Sometimes you'll see people use this in chat either on social media or in messages to indicate the line above. For instance you might see a line of these and a comment like this exactly. Next we've got Shift 7 which gives you the ampersand or AND symbol. Now encoding this is often used to represent literally AND when you're doing logical functions. Sometimes you need to have two of them. So for instance in this bit of JavaScript here I'm testing for A equals 3 AND B equals 4 and I get the output true because both of those are true. A single ampersand in programming is used to perform a Boolean operation called AND where it combines the bits of two different numbers. Now it's often used also to concatenate two strings. For instance in numbers you can use it this way. So I could use the function concatenate and then include one and then another like that to combine these two strings. But a simpler way to do it would just be to use an ampersand between each one like that. And also sometimes ampersands are used when composing HTML or other types of text for special characters. Like for instance ampersand B-U-L-L followed by a semicolon will give you a bullet character. There are these little codes for all sorts of different characters and also you can use numbers to get a specific character using an ampersand before it. Another way you might see this is inside of URLs to define variables. So sometimes you have a URL and then a question mark which then leads to a set of variable declarations. Like here I've got A, B, and C and between each one I've got an ampersand. Next we have Shift 8, the asterisk. And this could be used as a wildcard when doing searches in a lot of different situations. You can't use it that way in Spotlight or Finder. But for instance in Terminal using shell commands you can. So this command here will actually find any file that begins with IMG and you can see it quickly searches the current path for those and returns a bunch of results. You can also use it in Google searches to replace an entire word. So you can do something like this. And notice I'm putting quotes around it to find an exact match. But the asterisk says put any word in that one position. When you're programming of course you can also use the asterisk as a wildcard in a lot of different situations. But the other big way an asterisk can be used that a lot of newer computer users don't know about is it's used for multiplication. So you're used to seeing the multiplication symbol written as something that looks like an X. But on a computer keyboard you type that with an asterisk. So in Spotlight if you want to multiply two things like 3 times 5 then you have to use an asterisk. Even in the calculator app you can use an asterisk instead of clicking on this button here. So 3 times 5. The same is true in just about every programming language. Using an asterisk in a mathematical calculation means multiply. Now the last two keys, the 9 and the 0 key, if you use Shift you're going to get regular parentheses with those. Now of course you use those while writing. But you use those on the computer a lot for math to group things together. So for instance in Spotlight if you wanted to do something like 3 plus 5 times 7 you're going to get things grouped together using the traditional order of operations. So 5 is going to be multiplied by 7 before being added to 3. But if that's not what you intended you can use parentheses to group things together. So here 3 is added to 5 first and then multiplied by 7. And you can nest parentheses as deeply as you want. It's common to use these when coding to not only group together things in math formulas but when you're doing logical tests to group bits of logic together. And of course you would use these in numbers as well. So if I was doing a formula here where I wanted to add these two together before multiplying by this I could do a parenthesis and then add these two together and then multiply using the asterisk. Although in numbers it will actually show you a multiplication symbol even though I typed Shift 8 and then put that there and then I'll get the correct result because I grouped together the parts of the calculation exactly as I wanted them to be. Now I've shown some major uses for all these symbols but there's even more. For instance if you get to using regular expressions either in 
programming or perhaps in spreadsheets like the regular expression functions in numbers. Pretty much all of those symbols have some other use as part of regular expressions. But that's pretty advanced stuff. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.